guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jen and that's Fairby, and today we're going to talk about PTSD. I've done a few videos on this in the past. Obviously, we do videos on my PTSD service dog all the time, but I wanted to talk about PTSD in a different way today. If you're interested in how I got PTSD, I'll link that video for you guys below and I'll do a pop-up and then I have some weird symptoms, so I'll link a video on that as well. I'm gonna to touch on some symptoms that I have that are more normal expected symptoms and just kind of how I felt about the whole thing. Maybe this will help some of you if, if you've just got a diagnosis or maybe if you know someone who has it and you kind of don't know what that means. Or of course, if you're just curious about it. So what I actually have, I have CPTSD. I was diagnosed with PTSD. I was diagnosed with anxiety, depression, dissociation, and panic disorder. I wasn't actually diagnosed with CPTSD at first. I was diagnosed with PTSD, but because there were so many layers and so many things that happened to me, I have CPTSD. So CPTSD is complex. So it just means there's multiple things that have happened to you. PTSD is usually from one thing that's happened. They're still basically the same thing. It's just a different cause for your PTSD. I'm just coming from my experience, so of course my experience is not your experience or someone else's experience, so the things I say in this are purely from my point of view. Other people may not feel the same as I do on this. I was actually happy to give diagnosis. Of course it was shocking, but it was also really nice because I knew there was something really wrong, but I didn't know what was wrong, and to have words for that, it really helped me to feel just good and validated. It was upsetting at first because anytime you find out you have something like that, it's, you know, upsetting. But at the same time, it was kind of almost a weight off my shoulders. And the other reason it was a little bit upsetting is because there is no cure for PTSD. So whenever you have it, you just have it. You can get better. So don't let the thing where there's no cure for it, don't let that scare you and be like, wow, where I'm at now is where I'm gonna be forever. There's several layers of PTSD. So if you're diagnosed and you're like a four, let's say, which is like the worst, you can get, you know, better and maybe like a two or a one even. And it's different for everyone. It does take time. Definitely get treatment. If one treatment method isn't right for you, try a different one but there are ways to get better. There is no cure for it, but it can get better and that's great. Some things that I wish people knew about PTSD are PTSD can happen to anyone. It's not just for veterans. And a lot of veterans do have PTSD and that is of course very valid. And of course they have it because I've seen some horrible things, some bad things have happened around them but anyone can get PTSD. Even little kids can get PTSD. So it doesn't matter if you've served in the military or if you've witnessed something bad happening or if something bad has actually happened to you, you can get PTSD. PTSD can be caused by any of those things. So there's a lot of things that can happen. Mine is from domestic violence. And I, like I said, I did a whole video on that, so I'll link it for you guys up here and below. PTSD and CPTSD actually injure your brain's prefrontal lobe. And that's the part that affects memory, it affects speech, and it affects like things to do with your expression and the way that you express yourself. There's other things that PTSD affects as well. Like for me, I can't write whenever I'm having a bad attack. I cannot write. So like normally you'd write on a page like this, my writing will taper up or either taper down and I can't control it. Also, I can't think clearly. I can't speak clearly. I get my letters confused, which is part of speech, I guess, is part of expression. So those are all things that happen to me. And of course, memory is a huge thing. that happen with PTSD that people don't realize are fatigue. So this is not just like, wow, I'm tired. This is like, the only way I can put it is, it's not chronic fatigue, but it's like the step right below chronic fatigue. Chronic fatigue usually lasts six months or longer, where the kind of fatigue I get with PTSD, several days, maybe even several weeks at a time. And this is one of the things that I thought was weird, but the more research I've done, I see that it's actually more common than I thought. Tension in your body, and this isn't just like, wow, my shoulders are tense. This is like your whole body's tense. So all of your muscles, a lot of people with PTSD grind their teeth. 
I have actually ground my teeth to the point where I've broken teeth before, not meaning to. I do it in my sleep, so like, you know, you, you can't control that, obviously. People with PTSD a lot of times have stomach problems, and this can be in the form of any stomach problem you can think of, but diarrhea and constipation are obviously the two big ones. You can't sleep, maybe not always, but there are times where you can't sleep. And this can be from nightmares, but it also can just be from your brain, just reliving trauma. And maybe you're not even getting to the sleep point. Maybe you're laying there wide awake and your brain just won't shut off. I think I already mentioned memory problems. So this is just something that it comes and goes for me. Sometimes I'm able to really remember things super, super well and retain information. Other times it's like I have no idea what's going on. Just all of a sudden though. And it does come back for me. So I very rarely will forget something forever. It's just if I'm in that space where I can't remember and I'm having to learn something, then I can't retain it because I was already in that space. Rashes are something that people with PTSD get. So whenever I'm stressed out, I will break out in rashes. It comes up like welts, just rashes from PTSD, which are, it's so weird. So crazy how that happens. Apparently your body releases chemicals and I'm gonna be honest, I can't remember if it's cortisol or histamine, which one of those two it is. I'll pop the right thing on the screen. So that's kind of an unexpected thing, but it's actually pretty common. I get dizzy with my PTSD and it feels like I'm walking on a boat. This is something that I feel like not a lot of people experience. I haven't heard a lot of other people talk about this anyway, but that is something that I experience. Also the day after I have an attack, I'm usually really, really dizzy. So with my PTSD, I also experience cold sweats and freezing. And I don't mean like temperature freezing. I mean like kind of the inability to move. This almost goes back with fatigue in a way because that fatigue that I experience is kind of the same where I feel like I can't move. But whenever I'm fatigued, I feel really tired. And whenever I freeze is I physically can't move and I might not even be tired. It might just be out of nowhere. So I feel like all those kind of go hand in hand, but the cold sweats and the rashes are just two physical symptoms that just who would have thought that but it's pretty common. Shortness of breath, which once again, I feel like this almost goes in with fatigue as well. You know, you just can't breathe shallow breathing. It feels like someone's sitting on your chest or something is sitting on your chest and it's just like, all of a sudden you can't breathe. This doesn't necessarily accompany a panic attack though. This will just be a thing randomly. And that's also pretty common with PTSD. I've mentioned memory, but also losing train of thought. So sometimes I'll be standing there talking to somebody and it'll just be like, I don't know what we're talking about all of a sudden. Or this also goes with dissociation, which I don't know that this is part of PTSD for everyone, but it is for me, I have that with my diagnosis. This is just my own personal diagnosis, but either way it happens to me and it sucks. Another thing that I experience is feeling the need to be over prepared for situations. It's a great example. The other day, Fairby and I were gonna be gone. I knew we were gonna be gone about four hours, maybe five hours, I knew we were. I packed us both full meals and stuff basically for overnight. That's what I mean by overpreparedness. It is like a ridiculous level. And I didn't do this before. <laughs> it's just like my brain automatically goes to worst case scenario. A lot of people's trauma feel that they need to be overprepared for things. So another thing that people with PTSD sometimes have are safe foods. So whenever you feel like you're not well, you kind of gravitate towards the same things. And I do this pretty much for every meal except for dinner. For breakfast, I always have the same thing. For lunch, I always have the same thing or I have a variety of two things, but I'll go through phases where I'll only eat the one thing for like a year and then I'll switch and do a different thing. But then I stay between those two things. This is pretty common for people with PTSD to have like your safe stuff. So your safe food, your safe place, your safe spot, whatever it is because it's comfort. And because PTSD is something where you are traumatized, you know, whenever you're a trauma victim, a lot of times feeling safe is really, really important to you. And so your body kind of goes into override mode and you just do things that feel safe over and over and over and over. And this kind of comes back to hyper arousal and avoidance tendencies. So avoiding new situations, let's say, or things that you feel like might not be safe, even though they are more than likely safe. People with PTSD are usually easily startled, which is why if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've gotten so irritated with people in my neighborhood 
blowing the horn whenever they drive by to like wave at my dog. It puts me into a panic attack. I can't help it. I'm easily startled. I feel like that would startle anyone, but particularly whenever you are easily startled and you have PTSD and it makes you have panic attacks, it's super upsetting. People with PTSD will often be emotionally numb to things that happen to them that maybe they should be crying over, things like that. A lot of us just appear numb. It's not that we don't have feelings, it's that our feelings are so numbed that we can't express that. I used to cry a lot, like not just be like a whiny person, but I used to cry a lot and have, you know, like I feel like normal range of emotions, but I don't now. And that's a very common thing with PTSD. It can also go the other way where people with PTSD are overly emotional or more emotional than an average person. And of course, I think this is the big one that everyone has with PTSD is flashbacks. And so this is basically where your brain just starts replaying the traumatic event or traumatic events. And it just kind of is a loop in your head and you can't make it stop. And just depending on how severe your PTSD is, this can happen hardly ever, or it can happen constantly. And it's super scary whenever that happens because your brain feels like you are in that place and there may be a reason there's something that can trigger you and there might be something that made you feel that way but also it can come out of nowhere and there might not be a trigger it might just be something maybe a smell maybe a sound maybe the way that it feels in the air there are so many like little things and i don't know that this is true for everyone but for me because i had so many events there are a lot of different things that will bring me back to different events that were really scary for me so everything I've mentioned today, of course, is from my perspective. I think I've said for me personally a lot <laughs> so that you guys get the point. If you know someone with PTSD and they don't have all of these or they have different things, then obviously that's their journey and that's what they experience. Don't try to put any of this into a box and say, well, this is the only symptoms because there's tons and tons of symptoms that I don't have that I didn't mention. I only mentioned things that I have. One other thing that I wanted to mention that I wish more people knew, on top of it not just being something for veterans, I wish more people knew that there is no like on or off switch for this and that it is something that's not curable because I have a lot of people say things like, oh, you'll get better soon, and they have the best intentions, or like, I hope you get better soon, and things like that, and I know they have the best intentions, and then, of course, because I know it's a forever thing, so I'm like, no, it's not curable, and then I think people just think that I'm like being a negative person, and I'm really not being negative at all. It's just I know the reality of my situation. It is what it is, and things could definitely be worse because the thing that caused me to have PTSD could have actually killed me. So I'm here and it's okay. So I also wish that people realized that you can't just turn it off or on, you can't control it. And it's not that people who have PTSD are being flaky or are choosing not to hang out with you. It's that literally things happen randomly and you can't control it. And you might have every intention in the world to go out and do X, Y, Z, and then, you know, you physically can't. So we can't do a PTSD video without talking about my service dog for PTSD. So if you are a person who has PTSD and you are finding that you just feel like you constantly need help and you're constantly having panic attacks and you're hyper, hyper aroused, you're dizzy, you're having a lot of these symptoms that I mentioned and you're not finding things that are helping you and you are a person who loves animals and you are okay with having a dog with you all the time, I can tell you that having a service dog has helped me a ton. This is not something for everyone. I'll link a pros and cons video for you guys because there are a lot of cons <laughs> to having a dog with you all the time. And it is having to basically have a helpful toddler with you. But I can say if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. She saved my life so many times just by being here. She's saved my life. If you're a person who has PTSD, especially PTSD with depression, it might be something to look into for you. Um, I know that she gives me a reason to get up in the morning. She gives me a reason to live. She gives me a reason to keep going whenever I don't feel like keeping going. And that is huge. But not everyone needs a service dog to go out with them everywhere. Sometimes having someone at home, waiting for you to get home, and just knowing that's there is enough. And any animal can be an emotional support animal. Emotional support animals do not have public access rights, so they are at home waiting for you. But 
sometimes that is just all you need to know and that's still a reason to wake up every morning that's a reason to come home that's a reason to keep yourself safe and not do like risky things which a lot of us with ptsd have a tendency to do things that are risky because we kind of don't care so i hope this has been helpful and informative for you if you are a person with ptsd and you're looking for a service dog or you're looking for information on that i'll link a playlist for you about ptsd service dogs up here i'll also link a video just for you here i will link a mental health playlist below for you guys and this is just stuff from my perspective with ptsd so I hope this has been helpful. Leave a comment if you have any questions for me. Leave a comment if you have anything to say and we will see you soon. Bye guys.